Hello my YouTube friends. If you love Restream Studio like I do, you're gonna love this little trick I'll show you today on how to connect it with OBS. Now I love the versatility of OBS for adding scene transitions, my soundboard, and browser sources, but I wanna be able to add guests with ease and put lower thirds and chat highlights on my live stream without any hassle. Today I'm gonna show you how to add OBS as the camera source in Restream Studio with all the OBS audio as well. It's easy and it works on Windows and Mac. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Restream. They've been a sponsor for a while and that wouldn't be possible without the amazing audience that supports the sponsors for this channel. So thank you guys, I really do appreciate it. There is a link in the description if you want to check out Restream Studio and the basic account is totally free. So check it out and leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Let's jump into the computer and set up OBS so we can use it as a camera in Restream Studio. On this page, you want to scroll down and find the Windows installer. You can choose either the installer or the zip file. It really makes no difference. I just download the installer. And once it's on my computer, I just browse to the location of that installer. And I'm going to double click it and run it. Now I'm going to have all kind of weird glitches and errors when I'm doing this because it's already on my machine and I'm using OBS to actually record the screen. So it's running and on my machine already. So I'm going to be skipping a lot of this, but it's going to go smoothly for you if you don't have it on there or if you're not running OBS and you shouldn't have any problems. You just agree to it, install it to the default location and all that kind of stuff and you'll be all set. Once it's finished, if you did not have it on your machine before, you should definitely click restart your machine. The links for all these applications are in the description. You won't have to hunt around for them. You can just click them and it will take you right there. The next one we're going to install is the NewTek NDI. Now this plugin is basically going to create a bridge from the NDI source coming out of your OBS and allow it to be used as a camera source in Microsoft Teams. And it's really easy to install. And we're gonna click on NDI here in the menu and we're gonna select NDI Tools. And we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom of this page and click NDI Tools for Windows. Then you just have to fill out this brief summary, tell them you're not a robot and click Submit. Once you click Submit, it comes up with this little message here and you just click the highlighted link button and it's going to download the NDI tools to your download location. Then all we have to do is browse to that location, double click it and run it and accept the agreement, click next and here you're gonna see the installation and you're probably gonna to wanna to make sure you have full installation selected. You definitely wanna scroll through this, make sure studio monitor is selected as well. But the most important piece of this is the virtual input. You wanna make sure that's selected. If you want your virtual input to always be running, you can click run at Windows Start. I do not have it clicked because I like to turn it off and run bare bones as much as possible, especially if I'm editing or live streaming. But you may not be doing that on your machine, so you may not care if it runs all the time. And it's really not a big deal. Once you have everything selected that you need, you can click Next and Install. And of course, I'm going to have lots of goofy things telling me that my install is going weird. And that's because I'm already running OBS and recording with it. So I'm just going to ignore all these error messages. You're not going to have this problem if you've never had NDI installed on your system. It's just a problem with the fact that I'm running it at the same time as I'm trying to install it. Once you're finished with that, I highly recommend that you reboot your machine. So I'm going to start out here in OBS and I have two scenes set up. One that has a video playing in the background with me in the front and another with just my camera and a little transition in there. So to start out, we're going to go up to tools in the top left hand corner and we're going to select NDI output settings and we're going to select main output and you can name this whatever you want. I just have mine called OBS and we'll click OK. Now we're going to go down and we're going to find our NDI plugin. This NDI for tools is what we're looking for. And we're going to go and select the virtual input. Now it doesn't actually look like it does anything, but we'll go down here to the system tray. And there we go, we can right click on it and we see that it is already checked. We want OBS to be checked. And you can change your resolution if you want. And you can also adjust the audio volume if you want here. 
but everything seems to be set up and ready to go. So next we're going to go into Restream Studio. We wanna go down here and select New, and we're gonna change our video input to New Tech NDI Video. And I'm just gonna change my speakers so I have the correct one selected. And I wanna go out here and just retry this so it sets up my camera right. I can see everything working. There we go. And now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select New Tech NDI Audio for my line in. And you can see we're definitely getting sound. And I can go into Advanced Settings and set it up so I'm streaming in 1920 by 1080 Full HD at 30 frames per second. Now you generally wanna keep echo cancellation and noise suppression off. And the reason why is because if you're playing some sort of background track or music or something through OBS, sometimes it will look at that as noise and try to suppress it. So I generally tend to keep that stuff off. I do, however, want stereo audio input just because if I'm inputting any kind of audio that is in stereo, like a video or something like that, well, I want to be able to put that out to the stream as well. And there we go. Now we have our stuff all set up and I'm going to split the screen here so you can see when I change scenes, it's almost instantaneous. There is no lag whatsoever between Restream Studio and OBS. It's pretty awesome. I can also go into Restream Studio and use all of the features on top of my camera. So I can add the chat in if I like. I can use lower thirds, all that kind of stuff on any of the scenes that I want. I can also go into graphics and use any of my overlays or any videos that I have. You're gonna see that if I play one of these videos, it plays right over top. I love the fact that I can have all the functionality of OBS Studio with all the amazing and simple features that you get in Restream Studio. I mean, it's the best of both worlds. And the best part is I can easily add guests just like I would normally in Restream Studio. I can also broadcast to multiple platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, or any other place, all at the same time. Being able to use OBS with Restream Studio adds so much versatility to your broadcast. There are just so many amazing things that you can do. You just gotta play around and check it out. Test some things, have some fun with it. If you wanna see more about what you can do with Restream Studio, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.